A couple of videos ago, we looked at starting off um, how to work out collisions. And we wrote a little function called box hit, which could tell you whether two areas, two boxes if you like, had overlapped. So what I'm going to do in this video is use that function, the box hit function that we did earlier. And I'm going to use it to implement some collisions because you can see here I've got an orange dot that's rolling around the screen and a red box. And I would really, because that's the crucial aspect of this game, I would really like the orange dot to crash into the red box. But at the moment you can see that it just passes through. So we ask ourselves, well, why is it just passing through? And if we look at our code, we've got some very basic code here. We've got an X and a Y variable and some speed and an enemy X and an enemy Y. I've just given it the values EX and EY. And you can see I've got some very basic code here in the update function to allow me to move the object around the screen. So when I press button naught, the X value is decreased by speed. When I press button one, it's increased. And so the, the object moves left and right. Equally for button two and three, the object moves up and down. And then down here in draw, I clear the screen. I draw sprite one, which is just the orange circle to the screen at positions X and Y, which I've declared here and I alter here. And I draw sprite two, which is our box at enemy X, enemy Y, and it's a two by two sprite. Now I could have used circ fill and rect fill here, but I'm just going to use sprites because it makes things a little bit more relevant to the sort of thing you might be actually doing in a game. So you can see quite quickly that I have no collision detection. If I press a button, the sprite moves and that's that. Now I have pasted in the box hit function that we wrote earlier. So this one, if you remember, it takes eight values. The box hit function takes the X and the Y of one of the objects and its width and height, and the X and Y of another object and its width and height. And then it returns either a true, if there's been a collision, or a false, if there hasn't been. Okay, so it defaults to false up here, you can see, and it returns true if a hit has taken place. And we worked our way through that in a previous video. So I do know, therefore, that there is a command that is going to tell me if these two objects, my um, sprite one and sprite two, are going to overlap. Now to do that, the most important thing will be to know the width and the height of these two objects. So I'm gonna have a couple of variables here. A width for my uh, main object is eight, and the height for my main object is eight. I know that because it's a single sprite, so it's eight across and eight down. And for the enemy, I'm going to have an enemy width equal to 16 and an enemy height equal to 16. And again, I know why, because this, if I zoom out, has got 16 squares across. OK, I could just mark those in so you could see them all running across there like that. And we could do the same going down the side like so. All right. Now that in and of itself hasn't actually changed anything. I've got my rather snazzy little um, yellow dots on my box, but it's still not actually changing anything because we haven't really used the box hit function yet. Before we start, though, let's just have a little think about what's going to happen with collisions, because actually the way you implement collisions is, is potentially a little bit counterintuitive. If we have a box and we have another box that we want it to collide with, which maybe I'll do in blue over here. OK, so there's one box and there's another. And these two boxes are going to collide. Now, every turn, this box can move. So if, if I just bring you over here a second, if I press a button, the box will move by a value called speed to a new location. OK, and then if I do it again, it will move by speed to a new location and so on like that. So at each turn, the box will move a certain amount. So if I imagine that this is the value of speed here, so it's going to be moving quite fast. Once I press the button, this box is going to attempt to move to here. And you can see there's going to be a collision at this point. Now, if I said um, what will happen when the box is here, my function would say, well, they're overlapping and therefore there is a collision. And so I might be tempted to say, well, in that case, you can't move. But if I implement that, what happens is when the box is here and I press a button, you end up with this little gap here. 
between the two objects. And that's not actually much use. It doesn't make for a very realistic, uh, what, what people call pixel perfect collision. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know how big speed is. So I'm going to check every unit along the speed to see whether there is a collision. And if there is, I'm not going to move there. So what happens is I get some interim movements. I check the box here, and then I check it here, and so on like this. So the box is being checked every single movement along. Okay, and there will come a point, this box here, which is okay. And then if I draw it in a, in a green color, so you can see there comes a point on this box here where there is now a collision. There's our little overlap there. And so what will happen is from this point onwards to there, my box hit function will say true. And so what will happen is that the object won't move any further. So in other words, I will have moved, 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 moved up to a point here, and then I will not move anymore. And so what will happen is I'll press the button and it will appear like the object will move bang into the edge of this and then just not move any further. Now, the final thing to say is it's very important when you have an object like this, that even when it's banged against, that it can slide up and down. And so I need to, that means to check for the X value and the Y value separately. Okay, I don't want to check both at the same time. I'm going to check for X. Can I move there in the X direction? And then I'm going to check Y as well. Now, it might be in your game that once you hit an edge, it needs to stick, in which case you might check both of them continuously at the same time. But for my purposes, I'm going to check X and I'm going to check Y. So that's what's going on. We're effectively checking every value between there and the end of speed. And so in order to do that, obviously, you know, you're going to need some sort of loop and we're going to be using the for loop. And you can always check the manual for, for the detailed syntax on how for works. Um, but basically, this is what we're going to be using in our instructions today. So. Let's get rid of all of that and go back to our code so that we can see what's going on in here. So I've put in the width and height. That's going to be useful for the box hit function. As you as we recall, it needs width and height. But I haven't actually implemented the function. And that's going to come in here. If you look, when I press button naught, I move x by a certain amount of speed. Well, this is the bit that's going to have to change. So we're going to be putting more than one thing into this if statement. So I'm going to have to bring it down a bit to here. And what we're going to be looking at instead is we're going to be asking, instead of saying, let's just move x by minus, minus speed, we're going to scroll through every value. So we're going to have to introduce a new variable. We're going to call it new x. So we're going to say for new x, equals. So where's this going to go? It's going to go from the current value of x to the new value, which we have declared is going to be x minus speed. So it's going to go from x to x minus speed. Now, because we're moving in a negative direction, we've got to tell the for loop to go backwards as well. By default, for, for loops move forwards through numbers. So they'll go from 7 to 10, and they'll go 7, 8, 9, 10. However, in this instance, we want to go from x to x minus speed. So in other words, we want to go from, say, 20 to 17. So then we've got to tell it we want to move in the minus direction. We want to move minus 1. And we put in a do. And again, we put an end because we've opened a 4 here. So we have to have an end. OK. So I'm going to get rid of that value there of that x minus speed because I'm not interested in that anymore. We're going to be much more careful in how we approach things. So we have to ask the question, has there been a collision? And if there hasn't been a collision, we can move. If there has been a collision, we can't do anything. So we have to use some um, Boolean logic here, and we're going to use the phrase not. So we're going to say, if not box hit. OK, so box hit is our function over here. Oh, it's got an underscore, sorry. So box hit. So if not box hit, so in other words, if we haven't collided, OK, and then we have to send box hit all the values it needs. So it needs the current x value, which is new x, the y value, which is plain old y, the width and the height, 
Okay, and then because I'm able to, I'm going to just come down here and just keep things a little bit neater. I'm going to say now, what are we hitting? Enemy X, enemy Y, enemy width, enemy height. So I've asked the question, is it not colliding? Okay, and again, we will just have an N because we've opened an if. Now, if it's not colliding, then what we can do is we can say that the X value of the object is equal to the new X value. So we've gone through this loop. We've said the new X value is between X and X minus speed going at minus one. We're saying if there isn't a collision, make X the new X value. So just to run through it, so we're sort of clear in our heads what's going on. If I come over here, let's say we're currently at position 20. Our speed is minus three. So we're going to go down 20 to 19 to 18 to 17. And at each one we're going to check. So we're going to do a box hit, okay? So at 20, no box hit, we're fine. So our x value becomes 20. Then at 19, so new x is now 19, there's no box hit, so our x becomes 19. At 18, there's no box hit, so our x becomes 18. But let's say at 17, there is a box hit, it returns true. So at that point, we don't set x to equal new x, so our x remains at 18, and effectively our box has collided with another box, dudumph, like this, and it's up against it, and it won't move any further. Okay, so that's basically what we've done. We've looped through going like that. So if we run this piece of code now, I have a syntax error. Oh, I see. I've missed a comma. Uh, new x, new y, da, 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 da. you do need a comma here. Even though I've gone to a new line, you need to make sure the commas always roll through. So let's just run it again. There we go. So we have our ball moving around. Now we've only implemented when we press button naught, which is moving that way. So we're going to come down here and hopefully, and there it is. Okay, I can assure you, listeners, that I am pressing the button and that you can, you can hear me pressing the button and there is a collision. Okay, so if I come down at a sort of diagonal direction, you can see it clipping the corner like that. Diagonal clip. Okay, but obviously going this way, nothing's happening. It's only going that way. So I need to implement this all the way through. So I'm going to go and copy that. And I'm just going to need to paste into each of these. Okay, so this one is going to come down and I'm going to paste it. Now for this one, button one, we're moving right. So it's going to be for X plus speed, which means we don't need that particular value there. So if I run this now, collision. Okay. So if I come into there, there's a collision. There's a collision like that. Okay. So there's one. And then we can do the same. So I will just come into here for Y. And I'm going to paste in my one there. Just tab that in for neatness. This one, obviously, we're dealing with Y. So I'm going to have a new variable, new Y. Okay. Now this is important, we're going to be changing a few things here. Um, y is going to become new Y, but in the box hit function it's just important. Now we're not fussed about the X value, that's just staying the same. We're actually fussed about the Y value. Okay? And then also, obviously, if I come into here for the final one. This is new Y again, but this time we're adding speed. Okay? And so again, we don't need this particular one here. We're still checking X and new Y, and we're setting new Y there. All right. So if I come into here and run, there's a collision, a collision like that. Okay. So we now have lovely, perfect collision. Now, it's very possible to wrap a lot of these things up into functions. This has been very, very verbose in the way that it's been put together. Um, there, are, there are better ways of getting input and doing these sort of checks so that you don't have to repeat these things several times over. And again, you could wrap all of these up into functions or bits and pieces like that. So there are lots of more elegant ways of doing it. 
But the upshot is that all you have to do is use this box hit function and just keep moving your object until box hit returns true. And at that point, you say the collision's occurred and it's time to stop. I hope that's helpful for you. Happy programming.